who I did feel prepared and I mourned him before the death that he actually had and like who you know the state he was in when he died was like it wasn't like it wasn't like he was my dad and then he was gone he'd already gone to this other place so then we got into planning the wedding like straight away and I can't even remember what year it was <laughs> wow I think I, I, I was 24 I yeah that's so odd though that you can't because it's to me it's like that date I can't remember anyone's birthday I can't remember anyone's telephone number but I will never I know the time and the date that my dad died and I'm never gonna forget it I know the day I was know it's 15th of November but I don't I don't it's I fascinating can't. that you don't know how old yeah. you were you've like I think like it, I think you moved moved forward into your wedding plans, and then three years later, I sort of broke up with my husband, and then my friend's dad died quite quickly after my dad died similarly of like um a, a long illness, and she bought a house, and three years after she bought the house, she was like, "Oh my God, what have I done? I don't want to be in a house and I was like, "Oh my God, what have I done? I got married, and I don't know whether there was like sort of a subconscious three year grieving period. So I think, I don't know, I think I lost a timeline. Yeah. Over yeah, yeah. That period of time, you know. Yeah, I think I've lost, I lost five years from 2015 until now. I I was in a bit of a blur, to be fair. Yeah, I think it took me five, five years, definitely. My dad was in a band, as well as being a silversmith. He had a lot of tapes, and I thought that, I thought the ones I had were like the, um, recordings off of the radio like songs that he liked compilations and I'm meant to be putting them together still nine years later um uh, putting them together of like these are the good songs and sharing them with my brother and sister like like finding them in not tape form and then sharing them like these are the tracks these are the artists they're really good blah, blah, blah. but actually there's ones of his band in there and my brother's digitized um recordings of his band so I think when we moved here in lockdown in April, whenever it was, I definitely spent like a few days up here just like listening to his songs and crying. <laughs> I was like, oh, lockdown, time to cry. Great, let's put some of those tapes on. <laughs> but it does seem like this whole, the whole, you know, the whole situation has only brought these things closer again, closer in again. For me, I, you know, I felt I'd, I mean, I know it's cyclical and I know it, you know, it's never going to be over for me, but I did feel I'd reached a point and then when this kind of hit, I think it's changed my perspective completely. Just the notion that any of us could go right now. And I knew that anyway, but, but I like that because all it's made me do is, is think more carefully about what I do mm. while I'm here. And so I really like that the fear has changed me and the grief is changing me and I, I, I'm happy about that because we're never going to get rid of the fear or the grief or that's always going to be there. There's a thing over there, something I should take notice of. I glance tentatively and then a double take to glance to look for a bit longer. My attention is being taken away. I feel safe looking at this person here, but like Tinkerbell through the crack in the door, this thing wants my attention. It's the scary door I didn't want to open for years. The tiny door in my mind with the incomplete circle that something tells me that I need to work my way around. But each time I looked, the circle got bigger and harder to deal with. A big darkness of horrible upset. But now it's glinting at me, telling me to look. And it's brighter now, almost like I want to look at it. A friendly version that is good for me. I can feel it's good and fresh and safe and friendly. Maybe I'll just look from here. I don't need to go and open the doors right up just yet. Thank you, though, for not being so scary anymore. You know, I tell you, mama, baby, tell her I'm on my way back home. Here I come. Flip, flop, fly. I don't care if I die. Flip, flop, fly. I don't care if I die. Don't you ever leave me. Don't you ever say goodbye. Like a Mississippi bullfrog sitting on a hollow stump. Like a Mississippi bullfrog sitting on a hollow stump. Got so many women, don't know which way to jump. Flip, flop, fly. I don't care if I die. Flip, flop, fly. I don't care if I die.